All right, good evening, folks. How's it going out there? Welcome back to a Friday night. It is the Earthmaster out here, about 11.05 p.m. California time, June 27th, 2025. It is Friday night, so be careful out there. Uh, latest earthquake activity shows a point uh, 1.9 across the big island of Hawaii. They're across Kilauea Volcano. Uh, starting off out here across the west coast. Of course, we've had uh, a lot of activity out here across the southern end of the Cascadia subduction zone in the last several weeks here. With inland quake activity, a sign of stress out there along the Cascadia subduction zone recently uh, across the... Uh, Northwestern Nevada, also out here around Redding, California, earlier today. Got, uh, you know, a lot of activity stirring up here. The result of this, or at least the culprit of the earthquake activity, is the Cascadia subduction zone. That's what builds up strain out here across the area. The plate boundary, North American plate and the Juan de Fuca plate boundary. But that monster out there, that sleeping giant, can produce a big earthquake, and uh, I think it's getting ready to produce a big one. Uh, there has been, uh, looks like a little earthquake down there across the southern end of the Cascadia. Also a 2.6 prior to the su uh, the uh, southern end of the Cascadia Megathrust area. Right now, in the last 24 hours, no tremor activity across this area of Northern California and Southern Oregon. So things are, uh, it's interesting because we've seen an elevated area of earthquake, or not earthquake, but tremor activity here recently along the Southern end. Uh, and now it's come to a halt. And now we're looking at elevated earthquake activity across the surface areas and also inland away from the Cascadia subduction zone. So watching this pretty closely, folks. I've explained this here in my last couple videos how I think we're coming up very soon for a large earthquake across Northern California, uh, if not the entirety of the Cascadia subduction zone. On average here, folks, we see a large event take place every 246 years along the Cascadia subduction zone. How do they know that? Well, they take these soil samples across various uh, undersea sites between Washington, Oregon, and California. They look for turbidites, which are deposits of sediments that flow along the ocean floor during large earthquakes. So they know this as a fact. This is not something made up. This is legit science. And, uh, well, every 246 years, our last one, well over 325 years ago. So you tell me, you tell me, um, you know, what's going on here. It doesn't take a rocket scientist to, to figure this out. So not only do we have the potential here for a large earthquake along the Cascadia, but a partial rupture. If you go back here in time over the last several thousands of years here that they studied these soil samples in between major events, we see partial ruptures. Guess what is missing? It's a partial rupture out here along the southern end of the Cascadia. And I think we're seeing signs here of it happening. Uh, we got stress quakes here across northwestern Nevada, outside of Redding. Major events there across the southern end of the Cascadia here along the Mendocino triple point boundary. Uh, and elevated tremor events there. Let me show you guys the last month here. Actually, we need to go back here. The last... Well, last couple months, that uh, way you can see a little bit what's going on here across the Cascadia. The majority of the Cascadia subduction zone tremor events, this is slow slip events that tells us and everyone here, scientists, that the two plates are subducting slowly uh, underneath one another. Look where it's been confined across the southern end here of the Cascadia subduction zone. And that is a big deal um the time frame that has passed right the time frame that has passed since our last major earthquake and the tremor activity the elevated earthquake activity we're seeing along the redding area northwestern nevada tells me that things are quite capable here of producing some big earthquake activity i think we're looking at these little hints so to speak here and the partial ruptures, you've got, you've got to think about that. The partial ruptures, the magnitudes can range up to 
uh, anywhere from an 8.1 up to an 8.7 or so along the southern end of the Cascadia subduction zone. So it's don't ignore the facts out here. The facts tell us that many hundreds of years have passed. Strain quakes are producing out there across the surface area of this plate. That's the North American plate. That is a result of the Cascadia subduction zone. Someone asked me, uh, I, I did see the comment out here because I did note that the western area here of the coast will drop during a large event and it only makes sense let me show you guys an overview real quick okay here's a locked area this is a cutout view of the pacific northwest and the cascadia subduction zone here's a a diagram here showing the cutout view this is a locked area that sits just offshore so as this strain builds up here across the locked area the pacific northwest and the extreme areas here of the pacific northwest northern california kind of they uplift uh, kind of like a spring as the north american plate is accommodating here for this strain and the slow slip events that occur out here across cascadia if you look at any subduction zone area here uh, let me show you guys this for example this is vertical displacement this is going up for a reason okay now if you were to go back since 1700 this would be a enormous number and we're talking about feet. That's why when a big earthquake is going to strike out here, this land is going to rebound and kind of adjust for the spring type effect that's been occurring out here across the Cascadia in 325 years. So, you know, it, it's, man, it is a scary, very scary scenario for the folks out here. But it's got to be it's got to be voiced. We have to announce this here because there's so much danger that exists out here across the Pacific Northwest and Northern California here that uh, we're living in a time period here where we could talk, we, we, we could be talking about some big events here. So not only could we see the Southern end of the Cascadia rupture, but we could talk about a full rupture. Um, but the full ruptures here, like I said, in between full ruptures, there's always some type of partial rupture followed up by almost an immediate, um, almost an immediate full rupture. So we have yet to see a partial rupture, but all signs right now are pointing towards the southern end of the Cascadia subduction. So that's, that's just a fact. We've seen way more earthquake activity, way more tremor activity down there across southern end. And I think that is the signs. That's the telltale signs here that we're going to see something big out here. Up to an 8.4, 8.5 across the southern end of the Cascadia. It's all pointing towards it, folks. This activity there across Redding, this is not because of the San Andreas Fault. Look at these. Look at the depth of these earthquakes here. 12, uh, 12 miles deep underneath this area. That's associated with the strain that's building up here across the plate boundary of the Cascadia. Over here across the northwestern area of uh, Nevada, very shallow earthquakes, crustal quakes being observed there because of the strain out there across the plate boundary. That's the Cascadia subduction zone. So we have to take into account these telltale signs of what's going on. Please don't ignore this activity out here. Uh, I think I think it's going to happen soon. I don't know exactly when it could happen tonight. It could happen in the next 20 years, but it's getting close. It is getting very close out here across the uh, uh, the southern end of the Cascadia subduction zone, folks. I'm telling you, all one has to do is look at this map, okay? And I said before, if this earthquake, if the mega quake happened 30 even a hundred years ago, we would not even be discussing the potential for a large earthquake out here anytime soon because it's not every hundred years that a big mega quake happens out here. It's every 246 years. So this hasn't happened yet, but here we are well into the future since 1700. So to ignore the statistics and the facts and the information out here is really, really stupid. Do not ignore the facts out here. 
Further down the line, Bay Area, pretty quiet. Uh, one earthquake underneath the North Bay Area uh, earlier this afternoon. Nothing major going on there. I, I have noticed a little bit of increase here across the creeping segment of the San Andreas Fault, stretching down towards the Parkfield segment. Nothing going on there for now, but we are overdue here for at least a six-pointer. Okay, and there's some concern that that next six-pointer could trigger the southern branch of the San Andreas Fault. Uh, nothing major going on there across Southern California for now. The latest earthquake, uh, at least above 2.5, is a 2.7 earthquake today um, along this fault system called the White Wolf Fault System there, the eastern edge. Got a little bit of activity stirring up there. But this is all a sign there across the area of increasing strain, right? Pressure increasing out there across the plate boundary. That's why we get earthquakes. Earthquakes don't occur because of lack of strain, right? Think about that. <laughs> Imagine earthquakes happening because of lack of strain. That, that would defy science. So earthquakes are increasing uh, because of Im Im uh, the impending pressure out here. Uh, you guys hear about the geyser outside of Reno uh, triggering out here, the south side of the guy. Uh, there's a geyser out here that sits. Um, I'm very tempted, very tempted to drive out there and um, do a little bit of investigating about the geyser, but it hasn't happened since the early 1800s. So pressurization out here across the West Coast is great uh, to see this geyser activity stir up um, since the you know since the 1800s, but it triggered out here uh, a couple days ago. So it's uh. It's happening. You know, got to watch this pretty closely here, folks. Into Wyoming area, not a whole lot happening. There's that earthquake I was talking about earlier today. 1.9 uh, looks like, well, no, that was that was about 1 o'clock this morning here. Let me, uh, let me take a look here. See what we got there across Yellowstone National Park. Real quick. Yeah, there we go. There's that earthquake there about one o'clock or so in the morning, but that's about the only one. So I'm, I'm very thankful that they actually uh, <laughs> included that earthquake. Thank you. Thank you there, USGS, for that uh, that notable mention of the earthquake there. I'm glad someone looked into that. Uh, for the rest of the country here, as you can see, oil fields rocking and rolling in the liquid gold fields. <laughs> uh, yeah. Please provide me some of that. I, I would open handily. I would appreciate that. I don't have any rights out there to the oil fields at all, but that would be nice. A lot of money being made out there. But at the same time, you got earthquakes out there in the Permian Basin. Uh, let's take a look here. Uh, some earthquake activity across the northeast here. A couple of ones, it looks like. 1.5s to be exact. Nothing big out there for now. Uh, of course, down here across the Philippines area, 6.1 earthquake, followed up by a 4.9. This follows events earlier in the week, or in, at least in the last seven days, upstream here across the Filipino uh, plate boundary here. Right? Look at this earthquake here previous. 6.2. Further down dip here, you get that 6.1 today. Watch this subduction zone. That's... A, any major subduction zones capable, capable of producing a mega quake. So these little sixes are very minimal uh, compared to what can take place out here. So watch that closely. There's there's some telltale signs there that something big may happen out there. But, you know, there's areas upstream here across the uh, Japan area that are well overdue for some earthquake activity as well. We got a renewed event here across the southern end of the Nankai Trough in the Taiwan area of large earthquake well moderate earthquake activity large earthquake activity around here consists of the mega quake potential 8.1 or above in this area and things are uh well they're, they're still happening got earthquake activity bouncing back and forth north and south here of this area uh still with no main event for now uh, some deeper activity there across the Tonga Trench. New Zealand, nothing major going on there. 3.2 there. Actually, it looks like it's right on the Alpine Fault. 
Watch that area closely. The rest of the cut, the uh, rest of the globe here, fairly quiet for the most part. A little odd, unusual four pointer there off the uh, off the coast of. Um, let's see where that's at. Uh, probably Morocco area, just right off here. It's a little odd quake. Don't see a whole lot of four pointers off there. Uh, aside from that, the Atlantic Ocean pretty quiet. Space weather activity. Well, we're, we're continuing down into the boring class, B5.3. Sorry, folks. There's, there's just not a whole lot happening out there for solar flare activity. If you look at the magnetogram in, image out here, well, you know, it's, it is it is what it is. There's not a whole lot of complexity. So flare threat will remain minimal. We are headed to solar minimum here in, uh, well, in six or seven years or so. We'll be dipping down into the maximum solar minimum. But, uh, yeah, there's not a whole lot. So uh, the Aurora lovers, uh, well, that's, you know, <laughs> unfortunately, there's not a whole lot of activity stirring up out there on the sun for now. All right, um, real quick glance here at the uh, live seismograph stations. One earthquake on Anza, one on Japan. You know, things are they're definitely starting to move out here. i got to watch areas across the Cascadia. Obviously, it's been shown out here. These well inland earthquakes here are a result of the strain between the plate boundary here. That's the uh, Cascadia subduction zone. These earthquakes are not because of volcanoes. They're because of the strain that's built up and producing the strain inland. Uh, just got to watch that closely here. Nothing major going on out there across Hawaii for now. We'll catch you guys out here tomorrow morning for the Saturday morning update, folks. Have yourself a wonderful evening. Um, I'd appreciate it if you give this video a thumbs up, a like. Hey, even comment. I would appreciate the comments out there. Let us know where you're watching us from. And uh, we'll see you guys out here tomorrow for the Saturday morning update. Have a good one, folks. Stay safe out there.